So not everybody in labor needs Pitocin. Let's talk about it. So yesterday we covered what it is. Today, why we use it and the risks. Before I talk about why we use it, I just want to say this. Pitocin, like any other medication, has risks. Pitocin can cause stronger contractions, which can stress your baby out. It can cause contractions that are too strong, which can lead to, in some cases, a uterine rupture. These are real risks. This is why we monitor you continuously while you're on Pitocin. This is also why we start the medication off in a small amount and slowly adjust it, giving you more if you need it. This is also why this should always be a risk versus benefit conversation with your health team. So why would we use something that has risk? Because sometimes not using anything also has risk. We use Pitocin in three main situations, induction, augmentation, and postpartum. Induction means starting labor. We might talk about this if maybe you're past your due date and your placenta is getting old. Maybe your water's broken, but you're not in labor yet. You're not contracting yet. The longer we wait, the higher the risk for infection. Or you could have health problems like high blood pressure or diabetes that make your pregnancy a little bit more risky. We could also be worried about your baby. All of these things would be reasons why maybe we talk about induction. Augmentation means helping labor that started but then slowed way down or stopped. Sometimes contractions just fade out. When labor stops or stalls for too long, the risks go up for you and for baby. Pitocin can help get things moving again. After you deliver your baby, we use Pitocin to help your uterus shrink back down and stop heavy bleeding. This is actually one of the most important ways that we use it. Here's the thing, both choices have risk. Continuing a pregnancy past your due date has risk. A stalled labor has risk. Heavy bleeding after delivery has risk. And Pitocin has risk. So your job isn't to avoid all risks. That's impossible. Your job is to understand the risks and the benefits of your options and decide what makes the most sense for your situation with your health team. Yesterday I said we talk about whether Pitocin contractions feel different. The short answer? Yes, many people say they do feel a lot more intense. Why that is and what the research shows deserves its own video and we'll talk about that. Tomorrow we'll talk about how Pitocin works in your body and why monitoring is so important. See you tomorrow.